from sweltering Spain to schools closed in India. This spring has seen record temperatures worldwide, already established to have been made more likely by climate change. Today, though, a new study attempted to put a figure on the potential human consequences for our warming world. Humans don't tend to like living anywhere too hot or cold. Population density is highest in temperate climates like the UK, concentrated where the average temperature is around 13 degrees. There's another population peak in monsoon climates, which average around 27 degrees. Partly, this is because we rely on fertile river deltas, crops and livestock. But get any hotter and humans also start to see biological risks. In the worst case, it's so hot and humid that the body can't keep itself cool because it can't evaporate sweat. That's at the extreme. Before you get to the extreme, we see um, cognitive function, so brain function degrading as we go to high temperature and high heat humidity extremes. We see adverse pregnancy outcomes. We see uh, performance of the workforce degrading. Uh, interestingly, even when people work in air conditioned uh, factories, it turns out there seems to be some correlation to how good the weather is or how hot or extreme the weather is outside. Tim's team found that back in 1980, just 0.3% of people lived in areas with an average temperature of 29 degrees or more. So as a simplified proxy for the many complex consequences of climate change, they looked at how many people might be exposed to that level of extreme heat towards the end of the century. They found at 1.5 degrees of warming, the preferable limit set by the Paris Agreement, 5% of the future population would be affected. But at 2.7 degrees, what's expected if the world sticks to its current policies, the heat-exposed population will be five times that, over 20% of the future population, around 2 billion people. A significant proportion would live in India and Nigeria, where populations are still growing. That outcome is far from certain. The most ambitious global pledges take us much closer to 1.8 degrees of warming. But this study suggests each tenth of a degree we prevent could save around 140 million people from living in these extreme temperatures. Of course, some areas will be able to adapt, building cooler homes or just buying air conditioning. Air conditioning demand and energy is expected to rise threefold up to 2050, which means an equivalent of 10 new air conditioners will be bought every second for the next 30 years. That's an IEA number. Um, the implications of that for the environment are, of course, very damaging because increased air conditioning use means increased electricity demand, particularly during peak times. Increased electricity demand, particularly if it is fueled by fossil fuels, means further emissions. And further emissions means higher global warming, more climate impacts, and further increase for air conditioning. So we're in this vicious cycle that is driving up dangerous impacts. There are, though, already some who can't afford to protect themselves from the heat or who have to work outdoors, particularly in the global south countries most likely affected. Ultimately, some may be forced to consider relocating. Um, the World Bank has estimated that over 200 million people by 2050 may move for climate-related reasons. In some countries like Bangladesh, we're seeing migration from coastal areas into, um, into inland cities um, because sea level rise is, is quite uh, pronounced in some of these areas. Um, we all remember the devastating floods in Pakistan um, last year, which will, you know, those events like that are going to lead people um, to migrate. We're also in one of the areas where I have been doing research in Central America, we're seeing smallholder farmers having to move because they've experienced drought for multiple years in a row. The Horn of Africa has experienced consecutive failed rainy seasons since 2020, a pattern scientists found wouldn't have occurred without climate change. In 2022, the number of women and unaccompanied children migrating from the area to the Gulf states doubled. And there's some evidence those affected by long-term changes are less likely to return. This research then reminds us cold political debates about what action we should take will hold very real consequences for millions of people.